YouTube, it's Zoe or Read by Zoe, and today we're going to talk about Simon vs. a Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. This book follows a teenage boy named Simon who is gay but not out. His friends and family don't know. The only person who does know is this boy named Blue, his pen pal. They email all the time, but they've never met, at least. They think they haven't met. They go to the same school, but they keep their identity secret from one another because both of them are not out. One day, someone at school finds these secret emails and blackmails Simon, threatening to tell everyone that he's gay. And this is where our story starts. On a grading scale, I give this book a solid A. It is a wonderfully cute contemporary romance book that you can just fly through. Personally, I read it in one night. I could not put it down. And even though it's cute, it's definitely not cheesy. This is actually one of the most realistic contemporary books that I've ever read. I could actually picture this taking place at my old high school. Simon and his friends acted very similarly to how my classmates and I acted in high school school, they seemed like actual teenagers instead of how adult writers think teenagers act. I think this is going to make a fantastic film. It's actually being filmed as we speak, so I highly recommend that you try to pick this up before it hits theaters next year. That is all I'm going to share for the non-spoiler portion of this review. Now on to a spoilery discussion, so if you haven't read this book yet, I must bid you adieu. Okay, obviously the first thing I'm going to want to discuss is the search for blues true identity, I got really into it. Every time a new boy was introduced, I was like, it's him, that's blue. I tricked myself at first into thinking that Nick was blue. Okay, so I'm on page 10 of this book and I'm gonna bet you a dollar right now that Nick turns out to be blue. I know that he has a crush on Abby, but what if it's all a ruse, huh? They're already best friends! Am I on to something? And then for some reason I thought it was Martin, even before that whole Martin Van Buren thing. Wait, what if Martin turns out to be blue? He could be using this whole thing to get close to Simon and maybe he doesn't want Simon to know so he's making up the Abby thing? I don't know, he could be! But I eventually got it! Don't listen to any of my other theories. I have solved it! Page 64, Bram Greenfeld, blue, green, and he is shy and smart. I have solved it, everyone! I am a genius! Oh. <laughs> Why are we trying to sleep? But I am a genius! I'm actually pretty proud that I got it so early on, but it was also frustrating because I kept yelling at Simon over and over again when he kept failing to notice what was right in front of him. Bram figured out way before Simon and Jacques as the French alternative for Simon Says is way more obscure than Bram Greenfeld. Whatever. <laughs> Moving on. I loved how because they were communicating only over email, they kind of fell in love from the inside out. It was so romantic and beautiful. They opened up to each other and fell in love despite all of the not so amazing things that they shared. They weren't putting on this facade. They were just themselves. <sighs> and my favorite part of the book was the first day of school after they met for the first time at the carnival, which was another amazing scene. It was on page 272 when Simon and Bram are sitting side by side on the couch in English class and there is so much sexual tension that Simon ends up sighing when their knees touch. <laughs> Simon and Bram are killing me. Simon, control yourself. Control your urges, man. <laughs> After the romance, because obviously it is me, my favorite part is going to be the romance, but my second favorite aspect of the book were the friendships, or the entire high school setting in general. It was all so realistic and relatable. I loved how a good portion of the book took place at musical rehearsals and performances. I actually did a few plays and musicals back in high school, but because I was shy and not too talented, I always had bit parts like Simon. Simon didn't even have one line, but what I love is that he wasn't embarrassed about it. He was just like, yeah, I'm gonna make the best of it. The whole, it's not about, there's no small, 
parts, only small actors, that's the saying. That was Simon. We don't get a lot of books with school theater in them, but when we do, I feel like the main character is always one of the leading parts. So I really liked how Simon wasn't the center of attention. Simon's friends were all so fleshed out and distinct from one another. Their friend group had a very fragile dynamic to it because of the whole Leah, Nick, Abby love triangle, and then when Simon comes out to Abby before the others, there was tangible tension between them, and it was so realistic. I feel like I'm saying realistic so much, but that's what this book was. That is why I loved it so much, because it felt like it could have actually happened. Besides Simon and Bram, my favorite character was Leah. I related to her so much because she constantly felt left out of the group. I mean, she was actually left out of the group when Abby and Simon and Nick went to that gay bar, which by the way, was such an entertaining scene when he is flirting with that random guy, when he's going home and he's like, I need that shirt Blue gave me. But anyway, Leah hides behind her sarcasm, which is something that I often do too, so my heart went out to her. And who saw that talent show thing coming? I definitely did not. Her band just popped out of nowhere. I mean, there probably were some hints, but I was too busy turning into Nancy Drew trying to solve the case of who the heck Blue is to notice them. But I was really happy that Leah found a solid group and she was able to do something that made her happy. Something that I was kind of on the fence about was the cutesy teen slang that Becky Albertalli uses. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to give you uh, some direct quotes. I feel like this video is better researched than any of my English papers. Page two, giant holy box of awkwardness. And page 25, holy randomness. At first, I felt like the author was trying and sort of failing at sounding like a teenager, which is a big pet peeve of mine. But the more I read of this book, the more it grew on me. I started to like the weird phrases because it fit the quirky style of this book. And our main character, Simon, is a huge, lovable nerd with all of his Harry Potter references. It fit his voice. Family was also a big part of this, which was refreshing. I loved how close they were and their traditions of watching reality TV together and then having these theory sessions. Facebook scavenger hunts? I actually want to do that. That sounds like a really fun game. One of my favorite, I guess you could call them lessons of this book, was that family and friends oftentimes, maybe unknowingly, put you in a box. They have these certain expectations of you, but it is okay and natural to want to rebel against these expectations and try to step out of that box. It's a part of growing up. A big reason why Simon waited so long to come out to his friends and family was because he had grown up with his friends, he'd known them for most of his life, and he thought both his friends and his family had certain views of him. That's why it was easier to come out to Abby first because she didn't have all of these expectations. She was still getting to know him. I hadn't really thought about that before because I don't have many old friends, but now I can understand what that might feel like. I also loved how much Simon grew in this book over a few short weeks, months, how long was this book? It wasn't very long. The ending was pretty satisfying. I loved how we got to see Bram and Simon together as a couple. I thought it was going to end right when they met each other in person, but no, we actually got a little bit of couple time. The only thing that I wasn't totally satisfied with was the whole Martin situation. But now that I think about it more, it did end at a perfect point. I'm satisfied that I'm not satisfied. I, I don't know if that makes any sense. I don't think he deserves Simon accepting his apology because what he did was pretty crappy. I mean, he blackmailed Simon and then he forced Simon to come out of the closet before he was ready. He wrote that Tumblr post, which was just, I hated it so much. And then all he did was send a letter saying, I'm sorry. I feel like he should try harder. Overall, this book was a fun ride, and I love the diversity. There were some amazing quotes how white and street shouldn't be the default race and sexuality, that there shouldn't even be a default, and I really agree with that. That is all I want to touch on for my review of Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. Let me know what you thought about this book down below in the comments. Try to keep them spoiler free because there are going to be some people reading those comments who have not read the book yet, so try to protect them. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye!